Szeretettel köszöntök mindenkit, és külön köszönöm itt a Hacktivity Thank you very much for activity and the organizers that I could be here with this presentation. Is the Raspberry computer that we would like to make more popular here among the public. This is why I asked for permission to deliver this in Hungarian. Fruitful Solutions, this is the title of the presentation, and what um, a Bankart-sized computer can be used for, uh, I think uh, this uh, already gives you some hints. And let me just tell you that I brought uh, some of these uh, devices with me here on stage. I have to find it because, oh yeah, it is here. Well, this is one of them. And this is another one. So we can say that these are uh, gigantic. These are sensational, great um, machines and computers. This is what I'd like to introduce to you uh, through a couple of slides. Let me just draw your attention to the fact that in the back of the room, in the demo rooms, we are available. So whatever I'm going to talk about here, these can all be um, tested there. You can uh, touch them. It's a hands-on uh, thing, so anyone being interested uh, in this uh, uh, computer, please just visit us. And, uh, now, about myself, my name is Gabor Nemet. In the last 15 years, I had been working in the connected network areas in, in the world of IT, so as a network engineer uh, for multinational companies. And in 2012, uh, it was uh, a, a love uh, just started to uh, um, flourish in me, which comes from my early childhood, because then, uh, as, a, uh, as, as a young student, you know, we used the ZX Spectrum, uh, Commodore 64, and so forth. Um, uh, these were the uh, Sinclair. These were the ones that determined uh, my uh, career. 2012 uh, is interesting because uh, the Raspberry Pi. That's when this appeared, and all the childhood memories that I had came up. How good it was to have these small uh, computers, you know. Back in those days to learn programming and so forth, and this one serves the same purpose for uh, the students of today. Therefore, this really caught me, and I really felt that this was uh, uh, this belonged to me. So I decided to make this popular in Hungary as much as possible. And this became, this was uh, so successful that since 2014, I'm only responsible for these machines, and that's my main activity, and I really enjoy doing it. Now, let's get into it. Just a second. So let's look at uh, the Raspberry Pi. What is this? This is a Bankart-sized computer, nothing else. And the important feature is that you can also connect it to a traditional television, the old type of television, you know, a CRT television. Uh, and then uh, today, in 2014, when most of the uh, most of the televisions are HDMI, uh, I mean, the HDMI slot and uh, flat screen, uh, but this you can also plug in into a old CRT television, even a black and white television. Anyway, you can use it with USB, uh, USB uh, mouse. Uh, you can also, it's an open source device. So the software is open source as well. It is Linux and whatever you can uh, solve with a, a desktop PC under Linux, uh, you can do this, you can use this uh, for almost the same. We are going to go into uh, details to see what sort of uh, features it has, but for learning, this is an excellent computer. Um, the, the very good feature why the whole thing was invented is that this is a very cheap device. So the objective is that the kid at home would just take it play with it uh, that would not that would not uh, burden uh, the parents and then uh, the, the kid would start learning and due to these 
Due to that, a lot of million um, units have been sold, uh, sold uh, already. This is a very popular uh, tool. I think that this uh, graph shows you very well what sort of uh, peripheries you can uh, have. You can connect uh, HDMI, USB. You have uh, uh, Vox out. Uh, you have audio out. Uh, Three point five uh, jack or. Uh, of course, uh, 5.1 uh, quality in audio out. So, and of course, a mobile uh, phone charger uh, will just uh, um, will just charge it. So, there is no there is no moving part in it. You don't even, you don't need a Winchester. You don't need a um, um, cooling fan. Uh, it is just an SD card. That's where you have the op system. Uh, that's where uh, what it uses to boot. So, this is a very uh, well. Uh, uh, compiled uh, computer, and you can also, and you can also network connect it through Ethernet. So whatever um, uh, network you want to use it for, uh, you can use it. You have an additional camera as well. Uh, that's an interesting one, uh, the camera uh, slot, because uh, what we show you, you will see that there is a webcam made uh, with Raspberry Pi. Uh, now, this is a, a webcam uh, that has been uh, designed exactly for this computer. And you can, and uh, right now, it is a time-lapse video uh, being run there. Uh, so at the end of the conference, you will, you will have a very good uh, footage uh, of these. Of these pictures, of these frames. Now, who are the ones uh, developing the Raspberry Pi? Let me just tell you about the background. Even Upton, uh, even Upton, he is a person, uh, the gentleman in the picture. Uh, he is an engineer of Broadcom company, and he was he was uh, 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 the one who conceived uh, the idea. So the conception came from here because he said that he he would just try trying to th started to think that there there's a generation that grew up uh, who can use computer properly but they just have forgot forget forgot how to uh, um, program and he said that's why we just need a very simple device because if you if you look at a PC you always need to software uh, upgrade you need to replace this replace that then you have a, a larger software then you need to extend the, uh, the hardware and, and then you know it just uh, distracts your attention from uh, the point and this is why he was looking for the most ideal solution and after a couple of years of uh, uh, design work uh, Raspberry Pi uh, was the result was the outcome in the uh, background you have Raspberry Pi Foundation as an organization uh, this is an important one important organization need to be known very well it is a not-for-profit organization in the UK and they consider school IT education as their core mission and you know how to improve education uh, this this is why they uh, um, developed the Raspberry Pi um, computer and this is uh, this is why they are backing this up uh, fully I mean they are supporting it very much and this is very important because in vain you have such a computer uh, unless you have um, um, uh, a support so what you can use it for but you know they are also releasing a lot of uh, curriculum uh, curriculum for uh, teachers, uh, for Raspberry, f for 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 whoever. They are freely available. So anyone l sitting here who are teachers who uh, would like to use Raspberry for education, uh, what you can use it for and how you can use it for, uh, that then the curriculum is readily there. And the third one. The third thing, the third thing that is very important is that there is a huge a community uh, standing behind because uh, several million units have been sold, and not only uh, the the other important thing is that it has been sold uh, all over the world, and you have uh, enthusiastic programmers. Uh, and software engineers who uh, do 
participate in this team that is developing, further developing uh, uh, the, the platform. Who is this developed for? Now, this is for the engineers of the future, that is kids. I cannot emphasize enough, this is an education tool, okay, a tool for education. But not only they are the ones who can use it, I can also use it. I have to tell you frankly that uh, since I know this uh, computer, uh, I again feel um, that I'm a kid. I mean, I feel like a kid. I think this really, uh, the, the developers, design engineers, they really managed to create something that uh, uh, is really up to the requirements for this uh, target group. Now, here is a very interesting map. It's a very enthusiastic user uh, created this uh, raster prayer, uh, page, it's raster page, but it's quite simple. You just have to register your Raspberry, where you are when you're using your Raspberry. And uh, this uh, map shows you that wherever you have the color dots, or the raspberries, so to say, there, there someone is using raspberries. So raspberries is being used there. I think nothing uh, would tell you more how popular this computer is. Uh, so it's not like, you know, this country, uh, they know it. In this country, it's widespread. In other countries, they don't know it. No, I think that this nothing more could be said. So uh, this is very good in this registration, that this became so popular that the developers that the developers, uh, you know, when you first launch the OS, the operating system, there is a, a setup uh, part, and in the setup, uh, it just asks you whether you want to register. I think it is uh, worth doing it. A comparison with ZX81, I started uh, my career with ZX81, and we just, uh, you know, look at uh, what that meant uh, uh, back in those days. Uh, you know, 3.5 megahertz uh, is a CPU, and it went 64 times 48 uh, 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 dots DPI, and uh, one kilobyte was the, uh, the memory. So I think that if through today's eyes, it is quite interesting. Now this Raspberry, 700 megahertz processor, a CPU, in terms of video, it's HDMI and also composite, so it is the latest. 512 megabyte is the memory and USB keyboard, mouse, standard peripheries could be used, 100 mega megs is the Ethernet, it's Linux, Raspbian, I will tell you what this is, and as ZX81, there is one, you know, it was basic that he used for uh, programming, here due to Linux, uh, you can use whatever, whatever is available under Linux, you can use it here. And there are two especially supported program languages, programming languages, uh, that are a characteristic of Raspberry. Uh, one is Scratch, uh, which I wrote a second, but anyway, a Scratch. So a Scratch is a very, very uh, nice uh, developed for children. It's like a puzzle. It's not a programming language. It is rather an environment where you can put together your different thoughts, and then that's going to work as a program. Now, Python for Python for those who are a bit more um, sort of knowledgeable about that, about programming. Now, let me just give you a couple of words about the fact that uh, uh, the 2011 uh, design phase and the 2012 uh, public uh, coming into public, that is uh, um, launching the uh, product. Uh, what the path we've covered has been. It is very important to. Um, note that the object, the, the, it was not an objective here in case of Raspberry to come up, to come out with new processor, with new CPU, with new memory uh, each and every uh, six months. It is a very stable hardware environment that we are uh, providing. And hardware sales, the proceeds of hardware sales are not channeled back into hardware development. I mean, a uh, good part of it. Uh, but rather, 
on the software environment. Um, so if we look at the 2012 uh, split of uh, revenues and costs, uh, and also in 2012 and 2014, then we could see that there are significant differences in terms of performance, in terms of services. Now, the uh, first model in the left uh, upper side, that's a 256 megabyte uh, Broadcom processor. You can see the Ethernet as well, or Ethernet rather. And then under you have a Model A and Model B. No, un under that is Model A. And what is interesting here is that Model B, as you can see, has two uh, USB uh, slots and the other one has only one USB socket and also Ether Ethernet is missing from the missing uh, in Model A. Why? Now the reason Model A was developed as a version, uh, you know, without the Ethernet and uh, without the uh, the chip corresponding chip, uh, the consumption as a result of that is extremely low. Because Model B, if we just, uh, you know, uh, drive it to peak performance, everything is in peak performance, CPU and everything, then there is a significant consumption. It's like 3.5 watts. Now, if we use it mildly, mild performance, it's like 1, 1 and 1.5 watts. Model A, now to uh, indicate, uh, since it is stripped down, it just uh, consumes much less. And this is interesting, important, because uh, this is especially for mobile solutions. Like in, uh, you can, you can uh, install it in a robot, in, let me just show you. It's not really that much visible from there. Uh, you can put it into beautiful um, um, frames and houses. This, for example, uh, is, li is Lego compatible. So you could just, uh, you know, Lego blocks, you could just uh, use it with Lego blocks and you can put it into a Lego robot or, or, or whatever Lego uh, structure that you create. I'm telling you this uh, because of consumption. There you're using a battery or a rechargeable battery and then in order to be able to use it uh, for long, uh, this is very good. And then uh, Rev 2, version Rev 2, this uh, came, I think, early 2013, if I'm not mistaken. Um, two th uh, 512 uh, megabyte is uh, the memory. You could see certain pins uh, on the other side. I'll tell you more about. And the Model B Plus, which is the latest version, and this one, this actually uh, has been boosted based on the um, feedback of uh, users, so user feedback. So it's not uh, a new hardware, it is just fine-tuned. And then what you have 2014 is the compute module. Uh, this is quite interesting because despite the fact that uh, this, uh, um, uh, the target segment has been uh, students, but, uh, you know, as a matter of fact, also uh, those into electronics uh, have dis discovered this and they started to uh, develop on that. So they're, they're used, they are used in embedded systems several, several, uh, in several instances, and this is why the compute mood, uh, model has been, module has been uh, developed. Let me just show you a comparison, uh, model B plus uh, and uh, B, just to see you the changes, uh, because B is no longer available on, in the market. Uh, model A is still probably available, but it's B plus that is now the actual uh, model, uh, the latest and actual model. So downwards, you could see that the GPU um, pins, uh, what this uh, serves for, the, the number went up, so it's like uh, 20, from 10 to 6 to 20 up to 40. Uh, the CPU is the same. So is the Broadcom processor, as you can see there, number of USB slots. Uh, well, thank you very much, developers. They gave us uh, two further, uh, two further, uh, two further uh, USB slots because you know you also always had to um, deliver. Uh, you had always had to decide for yourself whether you're going to uh, replace your mouse with your uh, stick or whatever. So we have uh, uh, two new USB slots altogether. We have four, and the composite video. Um, 
slot has disappeared, but it's not gone for good, because originally, it, now it's integrated in the audio, uh, the audio uh, output, uh, because uh, that used to be just a stereo uh, 3.5, but now uh, this is com combined with the composite video. As I mentioned, uh, those in involved in electronics, they love it, and those who are not yet do love it for the same purpose, because it is very easy uh, to connect all types of different uh, devices. Let me just emphasize that uh, we have a hands-on demonstration, so we brought some of them uh, with us uh, at our booth. You can come to us and see it. Uh, um, in action, you can also see that the uh, GPIO uh, pin, GPIO uh, uh, pins. You can see general input output as uh, so GIOs. Uh, these are traditional um, 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 pins, and you can program them freely. Uh, you know whether a switch, whether a relay, uh, whatever you um, connect to it, you can use it for control purposes and. What is, however, very useful, and everyone loves it, is that it does support different buses as well. Uh, you can see the ones listed over there. This is a very good uh, solution because uh, I do see um, devices could be addressed uh, individually, separately, and then you can just, uh, you know, have a series of them on on the Raspberry, whether it's a, a computer, a game computer, a sensor, whatever you want to connect to it. Uh, SP interface. Uh, it is also uh, similar, uh, higher speed uh, interbus bus system, and you could also see in yellow uh, that you have. Uh, traditional you were um, uh, serial um, connection uh, instructions as well now let me just show you that a number of different hardware is available so really there is a, a great deal of uh, things you can choose from the, you can see a touch screen as I showed you this is the touch screen so, you see, that's it. You have the Raspberry, and this is uh, uh, w with uh, touchscreen, and then you have a digital I.O., you have LEDs, a camera, again, it's a uh, high-speed bus, uh, it's full HD that you can use with this uh, uh, camera uh, that you can uh, connect to the Raspberry. A couple of words about the uh, software environment. What really makes this usable is that uh, the software environment is very rich and very good. The Raspbian, Raspbian is the uh, OS. This is a Debian-based uh, Linux. And obviously, if you put together the uh, Raspberry logo and the Debian logo, you have the Raspbian. Uh, you get to Raspbian. Now, those who are beginners and they might be um, um, frightened by using uh, Linux uh, from a command line and they rather write, like to have a, a graphic U G U GUI, but this is there. So this is the, the, the GUI is there because anything you can do with the test PC, you have it full HD. You can use a full HD monitor uh, and you have a graphic interface to control your computer. Um, to communicate your computer, rather. Uh, and these are the different uh, interfaces that you can also access, get access to others, uh, to most of the software. As I said, there are two different uh, programming environments very much uh, um, supported. One is the Scratch, this little kitten. And you can see that it, it is like this is a programming environment that you use as a puzzle. You put together certain things. It's not, you know, and, and kids love it. My children, I showed them. Look, let's just let's just give it a try. And then an hour later, they came. Look, Dad, it works. This is why I did it. It does work. So I didn't really taught them anything. I mean, programming, but they they themselves realized and invented, and they're ten years old. Now, the other is a Python or Python. The reason it's good that it's that much supported is because you can do literally anything with it. I mean, whatever peripheries you want to 
the sketch as well, but you can you can you know uh, also use it to control um, um, different engines and uh, uh, switches. But in, in in Python, you have very very a refined solution. Uh, but any other programming that we see, Perl, Pascal, whatever, anything that's available under Linux or under Debian, Debian uh, is available. It's, it has been integrated, and you can use it. So if anyone uh, had, had been using desktop, uh, Pascal and desktop on the desktop PC, you can just sit to this computer, and you can just carry on doing the same thing. This is a short summary uh, regarding what you can use it for. It's an excellent uh, uh, education tool. Uh, lots of programming languages you can learn with it, and it's full HD, uh, full HD media playback. It's also available. So it's not like, you know, a boring little device. You can also uh, play back a movie, for that matter. Very good for hobby electronics, as I mentioned, uh, due to the uh, 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 GIO uh, and other hardware extensions server you could use it as a server however shocking or however surprising that may sound because you have network connection you have Linux from that point on we have SSH uh, HTTP FTP anything we want to do so we can use it as a server I'm going to uh, give you example uh, there to end as I mentioned it is it's very much um, sneaked in into industrial development. Uh, this is why you have the above mentioned module, and it's very cheap. Uh, but you have standard uh, interfaces for the hardware, standard interfaces for software, so the programming environments are there. And it's very important that it's not manufacturer uh, specific. So it's not, you know, one manufacturer that you're using it. It's an open source device, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, just let's go for it. You can, you can put whatever you want to put in it. And you can develop it uh, in a very simple manner. As I told you, I would like to uh, emphasize this media, uh, the, the media uh, capabilities. Why? Because you can simply turn your television into a smart TV. So if you don't want to replace your television for several hundred thousand forints of cost, then a couple of 10,000 forints, you just uh, uh, plug in a Raspberry uh, or hook up a Raspberry, and then uh, you have a smart TV and web radio. I go to the United States, but I want to, uh, you know, uh, listen to something uh, some of the home channels, I just put the Raspberry to the shelf and let's just, you can use it as an IP camera. We are also uh, providing you with the demo. It's a time-lapse video that's going on. So tomorrow probably it's going to be uh, ready. And you can also use it as an advertisement display. Uh, there is a very nice story here. A gentleman called me saying that he had a tattoo saloon. And he wanted a raspberry there. And I said, well, I didn't understand the whole thing. What the hell for? And then he just explained me that, well, one of his acquaintances said that, that this would be a good solution for him. But, you know, uh, let me tell you, I have never been to a tattoo salon, and I know, but... So I had no personal experience, but I did this, uh, the whole uh, thing for him and then uh, took it to the Lake Balaton during the summer, and he wanted to solve the following. So he wanted to use it to show it in the shop window or all the different uh, uh, um, um, all the different tattoos and pictures and everything he wanted to show them. But anyway, it worked very well because we put it on a raspberry and he said he was not, um, he had no, he didn't have PC in mind because he didn't want this 100 watt or a 200 watt um, 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 uh, power supply, power supply, uh, but this, you know, with the one, one and a half, one and a half, uh, one and a half uh, watt of consumption is good. Now, networking capabilities, this is very important. Look, it's very good. You can just hook up. This is a picture where there is a, a very um, significant, uh, uh, very serious server farm that has been <laughs> 
uh, made out of uh, a raspberry, and it's very good for torrenting. Because a lot of people just use uh, the computer uh, and keep it switched on just for torrenting. Um, and I'm not talking about illegal things, just legal things that are also being shared and downloaded. So you just um, you just leave your uh, PC or laptop or desktop uh, just on because of that. Now, this is a waste of energy. 100 watts supply just for that. There is beautiful. And you can use it as a web server. I'm not necessarily referring to any of the multinational companies with their uh, web uh, server, the web environment they provide, no. But as I said, uh, very good hardware, uh, uh, hardware devices could be uh, connected. But also, I have some acquaintances who use this uh, to put on the internet the uh, uh, the china and the ceramics uh, of uh, his wife that she's been manufacturing now i also last 15 years i've been working as a as a network engineer ntp server this could be used for now sometimes this is an easy thing if you have all these stratum servers in the rack and then you have the uh, uh, the uh, the uh, and you can therefore just uh, uh, go out on the net and then you get the uh, uh, the exact time from a device that is uh, entitled, but you can also connect a GPS uh, device uh, which has uh, which uh, gets the signal from the uh, the the satellites and the, the satellite also has. Uh, the exact time, which is uh, as precise as uh, 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 atomic clock. And you know uh, this, especially if you use it in confined spaces. That's a problem. How you could, uh, how you could use it. How you could solve the uh, uh, exact time, having the exact time there. In addition to that. Also, in the closed networks, you get the DHCP server, DNS server, whatever, domain name servers, uh, and so forth. And what is really good uh, is very good as a thin uh, uh, client. The reason I wrote it here is because you can only say this in a credible manner if you have already tried it. Let me just show off and say that in my business in my venture, the think clients are raspberries, and this is how we work, and you can work very well with it. And again, I'd like to emphasize, one, one and a half, one or two watts is the consumption. Let's just put it together. In a month, the desktop at home, that's like 4,000 for it. And this, I, I cannot really uh, express in foreign terms, it's less than a pack of cigarettes. And I gave you some examples what this can be used for uh, in um, popular solutions, like for example, mobile applications. We can you can use it for bird observation. Okay, I did it. A camera, and then you can have you know a solar uh, panel as uh, uh, the supply, the power supply. Uh, the camera is incorporated in the Raspberry, and from that point on. We just see what's there around the bird nest. And there are some others who thought that uh, their bees would be monitored to see the uh, yield. Uh, that's a difficult problem, uh, you know, for, uh, for um, um, bee farmers uh, to establish the volume of the honey production. And then they use raspberry. Uh, to measure the weight uh, of the beehives, and then uh, you you just uh, have a grasp on uh, how much the money is going to be. Or in autobus, in buses, a GPS-based information uh, center uh, is created. Again, there's a local network uh, in the bus. Again, so that's Raspberry. So Raspberry is the web server, and Raspberry is the the device itself. Wherever the bus goes with the tourists, uh, the relevant information is being displayed, or not displayed, but um, um, yeah, displayed in the bus, and also the, the information is also available to the uh, passenger, the uh, traveling passengers, uh, or through their own devices. Or the other uh, favorite topic is the space. You know, what is out there in the deep space? What is up there? 
Now they took a raspberry with a camera, and then it went up to 45 kilometers, and it uh, broadcast uh, beautiful pictures and images. Similarly, there are some who put it in a boat as a navigation system. Again, this is an example that it has nothing to do with everyday's inform inf uh, not everyday's IT, uh, but it's beautiful. Now, this is one that I wanted to highlight. I think this is very good. 3D game development. I think a lot of people uh, are working with uh, 3D uh, uh, games. Digic Pictures is a Hungarian uh, limited company, which is a leading company, actually, in uh, developing such 3D games. Now, I wanted to uh, go there to ask them, what the hell you use it for? Now, they have a studio, and the objective is that a 3D object to be turned uh, into a computer model and the texture. The texture is not, you can see, it is uh, missing from here. But the way they do it is that you see this uh, uh, camera system. Uh, this camera system is used uh, to uh, photograph the object uh, in 3D, so uh, from each and every side and angle. And then this has to be the pictures have to be shot in the, uh, in a sequence, or uh, at least uh, they have to be. And then these are in the camera on an SD card, but they also have to be read. So there is one Raspberry. And all of the all of these com cameras are connected to that same Raspberry, and the Raspberry uh, would control the uh, cameras when to shoot the photo, and would also um, uh, download the uh, pictures from the cameras and forward it to the uh, other server. They said the the Jijik people said that they didn't have such a system, and it was a very uh, long uh, process because they needed to you know harmonize the com the photo with the camera cameras and so forth. And now the whole thing takes half an hour and earlier it took several weeks. And you know, it was very important uh, that there is only one Raspberry and the consumption again is one, one and a half watts instead of uh, uh, the, the uh, PC. And the other one is the role of Raspberry in the industry. There is a Hungarian company, this is a Hungarian innovation. Raspberry P has been turned into a network uh, connectable a uh, microscope, a uh, fine optics connected to the Raspberry in the beautiful house and then housing and then you have uh, the uh, end product and this is an automotive manufacturer and they use it uh, in their daily workload and they are manufacturing more and more of those devices. The other one, my favorite story, is Raspberry in astronomy. Um, um, this again is a Hungarian invention or innovation rather. I know the developer, the device he has developed would control the mechanics of the huge telescopes because, you know, there are drives, uh, there are drives moving uh, the telescopes in different, uh, also in all different directions, uh, but then you need to control them and you need to, uh, and you have this software uh, that would control the uh, telescopes and you have the electronics uh, and the Raspberry, therefore, is an interface. Uh, I'll show you how it, uh, what it looks like. This is called Hydra. It's a box like this and it's raspberry inside. And what really mattered, because this goes to Chile, this, this, this box, this very product you see there is going to Chile right now. So whenever this is tested, whenever this works well, uh, then uh, the same um, um, or similar devices are going to be installed over there. It was very important to make it ruggedized so it should be weatherproof. Uh, the consumption should be low because uh, in those areas for a lot of, uh, it happens every, it happens very often that you don't have a, a power, you, there is no electricity. And the other important thing is that you could, you should be able to replace the hardware whenever uh, it's uh, broken. And as you saw the map that I showed you in the beginning, Raspberry is there, quite a, a good deal of places. Now, this is a, an addition. This is no Raspberry. This is a new fruit. I brought this to you. And again, you can see that uh, 
in the 3D in live as well at our booth. This called a lot of people uh, call it raspberry clone. No, this is the banana pea, <laughs> a pi, yes, banana pi. Oh, banana pie, sorry. <clears throat> so the objective was not to copy or clone the Raspberry, but to, to develop something that would be as compatible as possible uh, with Raspberry. But we saw that the capabilities of Raspberry are quite uh, uh, limited. I mean, you cannot extend the memory. Uh, you can, the parameters are fixed. So those who are beyond and who are close to the limitations, the age of, uh, of, of Raspberry, then they could uh, switch to Banana Pie. And this is, uh, I think it is going to be close to Raspberry or could uh, uh, follow the um, <laughs> the, the trace of, uh, of uh, Raspberry. This is a dual core. For <laughs> winner processor, processor. Now the here, uh, one G uh, DDR3 SD RAM, and there is a uh, SATA slot as well, so SSD could directly be hooked, uh, or a 2.5 uh, Winchester, for example, and uh, or hard drive, and then this uh, could drive it uh, himself and could also uh, power supply it. So uh, that would serve as a ex excellent file server for that matter. We also have a demonstration there of, you have the HDMI of, of, of course, and all the other slots you need, but it's important to mention that the Ethernet here is a gigabit uh, Ethernet. So, yes, the server, as a server, is the uh, bandwidth is much uh, uh, wider. So it's a very good uh, low consumption environment that you can create. Uh, this is a comparison of uh, Raspberry uh, and uh, Banana Pi, Raspberry Pi and Banana Pi. So I told you the most important uh, uh, characteristics, you know, SATA, 1G, RAM, and so forth. Oh, what is what matters is software. Uh, Raspbian is capable of running on Raspbian. That's not the main uh, uh, OS, but they said. Let's just see how it runs or what it does with uh, the Raspbian. So Raspbian, OK. But what's more important, we have Android as well. You can see the processor. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, tablets and other mobile devices uh, use the same pro CPU. So why wouldn't it be capable of running uh, on Android? It does. Uh, Here is uh, a chart showing you whatever is uh, supported by Banana Pi uh, OS. But it's this comes from yesterday. It's not yet outdated. But you can see open there. Uh, this is a very good game, like you know, activity, uh, whatever, uh, for networking networking people. What it what it what is capable of? Let's try to hack it a little bit. Um, but uh, open media was one of the uh, free mass uh, uh, solutions that uh, runs perfectly. And then, of course. Activity, main topic. I think everyone knows this. The Kali Linux or Linux, the Backtrack Linux uh, logo earlier. A lot of people probably know. Uh, and this is penetration testing. And it also runs in Raspberry. You can have uh, uh, you can have a installable image, and it also runs Banana Pi. So it is so bad. You know, when you think about the fact that uh, you just have this in your pocket, uh, powered from a battery, and then no one sees that it's with you, and then uh, you just uh, uh, discover everything around you. Now, I see that I have only one minute left from the 45. Let me just draw your attention to a series of events uh, that is going to start from uh, the 11th of October. Uh, this is titled Code Week, uh, supported by the European Union. This is a grass grassroots initiative uh, with a view to making programming more popular and uh, um, uh, 
promoting programming because uh, uh, there could be a lack of uh, uh, workforce in the EU in the future if uh, there are good, if there's going to be a lack of uh, computer programmers, and this is what uh, uh, Code Week uh, would like to promote, again, from the 11th to the 17th of October, uh, European Programming Week. But this is just, uh, this is, again, we're supporting this with Raspberry, because we can invite kids, for example. We can put three raspberries, and you can, from the, the cost of one PC, you can have like four to five workstations installed. So please, uh, next week from the 11th to the 17th, uh, please try uh, to join us in promoting programming. Again, codeweek.eu is uh, the URL. We would be delighted to have you. Uh, whoever wants to whoever wants to participate, you can just register in codeweek.eu. This is the second uh, in a row, second uh, of uh, in the series of these events. Thank you very much for your kind attention. That concludes my presentation. Um, we, you're all welcome to come to our booth or to come to our stand, whatever it is. Please come there. Please take it in hand and try it, test it. It is just sensational. It is just a piece of toy. Thank you very much. My name is Gabor Nemet, www.rpibos.hu.